What is up everybody? Welcome to DFS by the Numbers. This is my betting breakdown video for UFC 286. We got Kamara Usman going against Leon Edwards 3. Oh, I need all the wins. Yeah. Harder than all that is. You better move, you might get knocked out. Knocked out. You better move, you might get knocked out. Knocked out. You better move, you might get knocked out. And we are back for another betting breakdown video this week, breaking down UFC 286, a 15 fight card. So yeah, lots of fights. I have lots of bets, 13 bets to talk about. As always, going to be talking about these fights from a betting perspective and a betting perspective only. If you want a further, more in-depth breakdown on why I like which fighter, why I'm picking what, betting what, I did post a full card breakdown and prediction video on Wednesday and also did a live stream on Friday, so be sure to check those out. But yeah, going to be talking through, through some bets, looking to keep the ball rolling. March started off good um, on a three-fight event winning streak, so hoping to keep it rolling, make that four here. Um, yeah, it's kind of a tough-ish card, I'd say. I mean, lots of favorites, I think, come through today. Uh, I think it's going to be a lot like the UFC 285 card, where a lot of those favorites did come through. But there was that one dog, and that one dog was uh, Alexa Grasso. So we'll see. We'll see who can pull off the upset here. Lots of big favorites on this card. I think it's a solid parlay card, though. But I say we get into it before we do. So if you guys can please leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you have not already. I do appreciate that a ton. One small like goes a long way. It does mean a lot, guys. All right. Let's get into it here. We're going to start with the first fight of the night. We have Juliana Miller going against Veronica Hardy. I do have a bet here to kick off the card. I got the fight. Doesn't go to decision. One unit at plus 100. Obviously beat a lot of line movement. It's currently sitting at round minus 138. Um, I think that's a solid way to play it, if if any at all. At this point, you probably want to pass. I mean, this is kind of a sketchy fight, to be honest. Like, Hardy is a fighter who you take a look at her. Last time we saw her, she was obviously Veronica Macedo, right? And she <laughs> looked atrocious. Um, you know, she had one good moment in the UFC. That was a first round submission over Pollyanna Viana, which till this day just makes no sense but other than that she got dominated and finished by Ashley Evan Smith she got dominated and almost finished by Andrea Lee she got finished by Jillian Robertson um, she lost to Bay Malecki so yeah for what we've seen from Hardy has looked awful but she's 27 years old now so I mean that means the last time we saw her she was 24 and if she went out there and made improvements over this big long layoff and comes back looking like a different fighter I mean I don't know if you know you want to lay this price tag on Juliana Miller for that reason um with all that said though I think Miller gets the fight down to the mat and when it is on the mat she's a savage you know great ground and pound submission game I think she finishes Hardy at some point in this matchup but give me the fight doesn't go give me the under um because we have seen Hardy go out there and and, and submit Pollyanna Viana um, which makes no sense, like I said, but still, you know, and it, like I said, she could be making those improvements as well, but I'm thinking violence here for the first fight on the card. It's kind of a borderline 1-800 gambler fight, though, to be honest, especially at this price tag from Miller, but I'm going violence. Fight doesn't go to the decision. One unit plus 100. I think it's still solid at minus 138. All right, moving on. Ludovic Klein going against Jai Herbert. Yeah, no bet here. Um, I'm tempted on, like, the fight doesn't go to the decision, but I don't know. It's one of those fights where I could see this going the distance I mean it really shouldn't but it's one of those fights where I could see it doing so I mean Jai Herbert in his last fight just decided to not even fight against Kyle Nelson he looked like he didn't want to be there he won the fight but my goodness just you know the worst fight I've ever seen so yeah I think Herbert's fighting a lot smarter lately because he knows he does not have the best chin and all that so that could happen here Klein is a guy that is not high volume in his own outright so yeah I could see this maybe being one of the more boring fights on the card potentially but I still lean Klein by knockout. Um, nothing sticks out here from a betting perspective. If anything, it's the fight doesn't go maybe as a potential parlay piece. But outside of that, it's going to be a pass for me here. Moving on, we got Joanne Wood going against Luana Carolina. Now, this is probably the 1-800 gambler fight of the week. Um, Joanne Wood should win this fight. I mean, there, there's no excuse for her not winning this fight. It's just she's 37 years old. Um... There's talks about this potentially being her retirement fight. I thought that retirement fight was literally last fight. But no, she's getting another shot here for some reason. She's looked atrocious. She's looked horrible. But it was against Tyler Santos and Alexa Grasso. We can forgive her just a little bit. Um, she should beat Luana Carolina. It's just the, the problem I have in terms of laying chalk on, on Wood here is I just question her motivation. I question she, whether she wants to be here or not because it surely does not look like it. But outside of that, she should win this fight. You know, Wood's been struggling with the grappling. Uh, Luana Carolina, zero takedowns in the UFC. Uh, Joanne Wood's going to have the higher volume. She's fought the better competition. You know, this should be Joanne Wood all day. It's just I don't really want to get in the habit of laying minus 180 
on a type of fight like this. So I'm, I'm passing on it, but I don't hate anybody taking a shot on Wood. Um, this could, in hindsight, look like a great spot, but I don't want to um, risk my mental health betting on the, on a fight like this. So I'm passing, but Joanne was uh, absolutely the pick. All right. This is the most exposure I have on this on this card. I have two and a half units on Jake Hadley, um, parlayed with the over one and a half in the main event that came out to around minus 184 on Bet365. So I have that parlay going. Really like Jake Hadley this week. I also added one and a half units on Jake Hadley inside the distance at minus 135 after the weigh-in. So Malcolm Gordon was the only person to miss weight. He missed weight by a couple pounds, and that tells me one of three things. Either he's hurt, either he's sick, or he wants, a, he wants an unfair advantage here. Because he'd even try to cut weight after that, which was odd. He weighed in early and then decided not to continue cutting weight. So I think he might be hurt, sick, or is trying to trying to cheat here a little bit. I don't know. One of the one of the three. But regardless, I think it's a good matchup for Hadley. I think they're trying to build Hadley up here. I think the UFC hates Malcolm Gordon. They continue to just try to build fighters off of Malcolm Gordon, and it's worked more times than not. But there's been times it hasn't worked. You know, we saw Little Figgy go out there and lose to Malcolm Gordon. We saw Dennis Bonder um, go out there and lose to Malcolm Gordon. But we also have seen Makaya go out there and finish him. We've seen uh, Sumadarji go out there and finish him. Amir al to go out there and finish him. And I think Jake Hadley goes out there and finishes him as well. Malcolm Gordon, six losses, all six inside the distance, four by knockout, two by sub. He's a BJJ black belt, but he's been subbed twice in the UFC. He gets hurt in pretty much every fight. He's only getting older. I think it's Hadley's time. I think Hadley finishes Malcolm Gordon in this fight. One and a half units on that inside the distance for Hadley, and then two and a half units on a parlay. My night comes down to one Jake Hadley for the most part. Moving on, we got Christian Leroy Duncan going against Dusko Todorovic. Yeah, nothing here from a betting perspective. I think, obviously, violence sticks out, but, you know, what are you going to do when the fight doesn't go to decisions? Nearly minus 400. Um, I think Duncan wins the fight by knockout, but the knockout props only plus 115. They're all over it. Like, if anything, it's probably a, a dog or pass situation here. Um, just because I think Dusko's getting counted out a little bit. I'm not a big fan of him myself, and I know a lot of people aren't, but he does have some, you know, good things in his in his skill set. Like he's um, a really good grappler, BJJ black belt. His ground and pound's really good. He has good volume on the feet. It's just he lacks striking defense. He lacks a chin, and you know those two things are gonna be very important in this matchup. So I see Duncan catching him at some point, but no bet for me on this one. Leroy Murphy going against Gabriel Santos. Um, love this fight. If uh, Gaethje Fizia was not on the card, this would be my pick for fight of the night. But um, yeah, I love this fight though. Leroy Murphy Gabriel Santos. So I do have two bets here. I have a one-unit bet on the fight doesn't go to decision, plus 105. That's actually plus 108 right now on FanDuel. I'm debating on whether I want to add on or not. Um, and then I have a quarter unit on Lerone Murphy to win by knockout, plus 400 um, quarter unit to win one unit there. So, yeah, I was actually really impressed with what I saw from Gabriel Santos. Um, it's just he has a lot of things going against him in this matchup. He was taken on short notice. He's flying from all the way to Brazil to London. Um on top of that, I still think he's a little bit green in some areas, and, and more particularly the striking defense, uh, very hittable, relies on that chin. He's been hurt a lot outside the UFC. Um, I think it's to be a war, and that's because you know Santos makes things a war. He makes you know these things uh, you know a brawl, and a lot of times he's getting dropped in these fights. He's coming back and winning. I don't know if that's going to work against Lerone Murphy, who hits like a truck. I mean, what he did to Ricardo Ramos was was insane. Um, he knocked him out twice in that fight. He got on top, landed some elbows. I could have sworn Ramos was out. He probably was out. And then he woke him back up with some shots, and then he just put him out again. I mean, Lerone Murphy has a ton of power. He need Maquan and Marikani. And Maquan was, was out for a good, like, 10 minutes. I mean, it was bad. Um, so, yeah, I think um, Murphy knocks out Santos. But, hey, if, if Santos gets on top, Santos gets this fight down to the mat. He's a BJJ brown belt, really good grappler. It could get very interesting. So um, the pick is Murphy. The pick is Murphy by knockout, and I do have a unit on the fight doesn't go, and a quarter unit on the knockout problem. Muhammad Makayev going against Shafel Filio. It's a pass here. I mean, you know, typically I'd be passing on minus 1,000 favorites in general, but this is a minus 1,000 favorite with a potential shoulder injury. I mean, he's been talking about it all week. Apparently, um, he injured his shoulder. Um, he's putting off the surgery to fight in this fight because he wanted to fight in London. And when we're talking minus 1,000, I mean, that's just, no, no, absolutely not. Um, no props stick out, nothing sticking out. This is not like a Batista situation where we knew Batista was going to submit Guido Canetti in the first round. This was not. This is not a, um, you know, Bo Nickel situation where we knew Bo Nickel was going to submit 
uh, Jamie Pickett in the first round. I mean, I could see this going a couple different ways. You know, Makai by decision, Makai by sub at some point. Um, but I don't think he runs right through Filio. I don't think Filio's a bum at all. I think he's actually a solid fighter. And it, on top of the shoulder injury concerns, um, it's a big pass for me. Sam Patterson, uh, you know, Ashmo's. I have the under two and a half here, minus 130, one unit on it. It's around minus 150 now. Um, you know, Sam Patterson is huge for the division. He's going to have a six inch height advantage at least on paper at six inches. In real life, it looks like eight inches. I mean, Ashmo's is small. And then Patterson's a giant for the division. So Patterson's much bigger, like a 10-inch reach advantage, something crazy like that. Um, not a big fan of Patterson, to be honest. I don't like the striking defense, the takedown defense. He can lose minutes in fights. But, hey, I, I see him getting a submission at some point in this fight. He's a very opportunistic finisher. Like, he can be losing fights, and then he'll, you know, he'll snatch up your neck. Um, he'll, he'll hurt you on the feet. I mean, he's not the best minute winner. And going forward, that's a concern. And he does have some defensive holes. But, you know, I think it's a kind of a tough match for Ashmos. Um, I think the time to fade Patterson will come in the very near future. But I don't know if this is a matchup to do it. Not only is Ashmos very smaller, he's going to struggle with that range on the feet. I mean, sure, he might be able to, you know, clip Patterson, who's very hittable, has that tall man's defense. Sure, he might be able to take down Patterson, who doesn't have the best takedown defense. But, you know, at range, I think he's... You know, with that 10-inch reach disadvantage, he's going to struggle there. And then when it's up close, you know, Patterson's submission game, I think, is going to give him trouble as well. I like Patterson by sub. I like the earlier sub numbers. Like, Patterson by sub was, like, plus 400 earlier in the week. I would have loved that. It's now plus 250. I'm not going to touch it there. But I think the most likely scenario is Patterson by sub. But I took the under, one unit minus 130. Omar Morales going against Chris Duncan. This is um, just a, a sloppy mess of a fight. I don't think I'm, – I'm shocked it's this high up on the card. Like, this is – like, this should be, like, the, the first... I mean, this fight's kind of terrible, but at the same time, it's it's going to be awesome. Um, just because of Chris Duncan's style. Like, Chris Duncan has no regards to his own safety. Um, he has the worst striking defense I've ever seen in my life. He walks with his hands completely down, and he eats punches with his face, and he likes it. Um, this guy's been dropped more times than I can count. But he's, he's tough, but, man, when, when you have no striking defense and you're fighting at lightweight, that's an that's a serious issue. Um, these guys at lightweight, they hit hard. And so does Omar Morales. Like, Morales, um, his power hasn't really translated to the UFC, though. He's now 37. He only has one knockdown in the UFC, and it was against Dung Hung Ma, who gets knocked out by everybody. Um, so, yeah, I'm not a big fan of Chris Duncan, but, man, I'm not a big fan of Morales either. Um, Morales, 37 years old, lightweight, has fought at featherweight a lot of his career as well. Uh, Morales, he's a BJJ black belt, just refuses to use it. I think it's going to be a slop fest. I think somebody's going to get knocked out here. Um, I like the fight to end inside the distance. I parlayed the fight, doesn't go to decision here, and I'll talk about the other parlay piece in a second. But, yeah, I think violence is the way to go. The fight doesn't go as a potential parlay piece. The under 1.5 even can be worth a shot at plus money under 2.5. I think these guys are just going to stand and bang, and, you know, Duncan has a lot of power, and then no strike and defense on the other side. So, yeah, I like violence here, if anything, but this is probably a fight that should be avoided, um, in all honesty. All right, Jack Shore going against Mac one Americani, I do have three bets here on this fight. I have the over one and a half rounds, minus 125, 1.25 units. Um, that line has moved a little bit. It's around minus 150. I still think it's good, and, and here's why. Um, if this fight does go under, I think it's Mac one finish. And at that point, you might as well just bet Mac one sub one plus 1,800 on DraftKings, which that is a wild line. But I think it's going to be pretty tough for him to go out there and, and finish Shore. You know, Shore is a really good grappler, really good wrestler, really good takedown defense. I know Shore is coming up a weight class, but it's just hard for – for me to see Mac one going out there and, and subbing him early on, I don't think he's going to hurt Shore. I don't think he has the striking to do so. So yeah, I think Mac one might have success early, potentially take down Shore. Um, but you know, as the fight goes on in a typical Mac one Americani fashion, he does slow down, and I think Jack Shore is going to slowly start taking over, slowly going to put it on him, and I think Jack Shore gets the late finish. So not only did I play the over here, 1.25 units minus 125, but I did sprinkle the second and third round props for Jack Shore. I got a quarter unit on the second round prop for Jack Shore, plus 460, and then a quarter unit on the round three prop for Jack Shore at plus 850. I think Jack Shore finishes Maquan late in this one. And like I said, if you like Maquan, round one sub is probably the way to go. All right, moving on to the main card opener, Marvin Vittori going against Roma Delidze. Um, I wanted to pick Delidze here, but there's literally no way I can. I mean, I just really struggle to see a path to victory outside of like some type of meme finish. Um, it's just a tough matchup. Like Vittori is going to be the minute winner anywhere this goes. Um, he's going to probably triple up the volume of Delidze. He has the much better cardio. You know, you know, lately he's only lost like Adesanya and Whitaker. 
Um, but Delidze has power. He has a great submission game, and he's somebody that just gets it done. And he gets it done as an underdog, and he's been cashing as an underdog. And I think that's why Delidze is a popular pick. And I was thinking about taking him too, but after looking into this fight, I mean, there's just no way that I can. Um, I'm just not sure. Like, does Delidze knock out Marvin Vittori, who's never been knocked out? I doubt it. Does Delidze submit Marvin Vittori, who's a very good grappler in his own right? I kind of doubt it. Um, but hey, I mean, he's he's surprised people before, and he could do it again. But I don't know. Not for me. Um, I would say like the Delidze finish only, but that's like chalk. That's like minus one twenty-five. So they're all over that and more. Um, I like Vittori here. Uh, I like Vittori to win this fight, um, probably by decision. I did bet. Vittori in a parlay I got him at minus 290 and I parlayed it with the uh, Morales Duncan fight doesn't go to decision minus 205 that came out to plus 100 for one unit so I did parlay up Marvin Vittori and by the way on the screen this should be a minus 275 there but yeah he's a minus 275 to minus 300 favorite and I think um I think it's warranted like outside of a meme finish if I get if I get memed again it's 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 it is what it is just laugh laugh about it you know Roma de Lidze by by toehold Maybe a flying knee bar. I mean, I think if Delidze wins it, something crazy is going to happen. And he's done it before, so we'll see. But give me Vittori for the dub. Casey O'Neill going against Jennifer Maya. Um, yeah, nothing here. Uh, I'm not a big fan of Casey O'Neill, to be honest. But I think in this fight, I am a big fan of her winning. Not a big fan, but I'm a fan of her winning just because I hate Jennifer, Maya, Jennifer Maya's fight IQ. Like, if Maya would wrestle here... I probably max betting her at plus 150. Um, you know, Maya's a great BJJ black belt. And if she can get on top of O'Neill, like we've seen O'Neill stuck on her back at periods of time. Um, the Procopio fight, Procopio had a lot of success early on. Um, she gassed out. But yeah, if Maya wants to go for takedowns here, she can probably win minutes on the mat. And But she's not going to do that. She never does that. So I think this fight's going to play out on the feed. And although Maya's a solid striker, she could be competitive. It's going to be the volume of Casey O'Neill that I think takes over. Do I like Casey O'Neill to win? Yes. Do I like Casey O'Neill at minus 180? No, not at all. Um, especially coming off, to, after, uh, off of a layoff, coming off of an injury. I'm okay on that. Uh, one big giant pass. If anything, it's probably a dogger pass. But I think O'Neill wins just via volume. And if there are takedowns in this fight, they probably come from O'Neill just due to the fact that Maya refuses to wrestle despite her incredible grappling. All right, moving on. Gunnar Nelson, Brian Barberena. Nelson, uh, one of the biggest favorites on the card, and I can't argue it. I mean, this stylistically, this matchup sucks for Barberena. Barberena, terrible takedown defense, getting taken down by terrible fighters, to be honest. Um, you know, Anthony Ivey took him down six times. We saw Jason Witt take him down like six, seven times. I think eight times even. Uh, Matt Brown, who hadn't gotten five takedowns in like the last 10 years, Matt Brown took him down five times. Gunnar Nelson's going to take him down. And Gunnar Nelson's probably going to sub him. Um, a lot of people bring up the Sato fight. Oh, we couldn't uh, submit Sato. Sato didn't try to win the fight. He didn't try to get up. He was content to take that moral victory and and, and say, hey, I, I lost to Gunnar Nelson, but hey, I didn't get submitted. Uh, whereas Barbara Rainey, he's going to try to work his way up. He's going to put himself into bad spots to get up, and that's that's going to be a problem against Nelson. Um, obviously, you don't lay minus 370 on Gunnar Nelson. What I did was I played him by submission. I got plus 115 for half a unit. It's actually plus 125 out there. So the price got better as the week went on. But yeah, I think that's Gunnar Nelson's path to victory. And if he pays off this price tag, I think it will be by submission. So give me Gunnar Nelson by submission. And I do have that sub prop half a unit. Coming event, Raphael Fiziev going against Justin Gaethje. I like violence here. You know, Justin Gaethje, a very violent fighter. I think for him to have success in this matchup, he's going to have to make it a violent fight. He's not going to go out there and point fight and play patty cake with Rafael Fizia for three rounds. If he does that, he's losing 30-27, 30-26. He's going to have to go out there and try to take his head off, which I think that's going to leave openings for Gaethje to be hit, encountered, and knocked out. And I think if Gaethje wins this fight, it's going to be by knockout. So I like the fight doesn't go. Um, you know, Gaethje has only been to decision one time in 10 fights. Like, that's a big sample. Um, so 90% of Gaethje's UFC fights have finished inside the distance, and the one that didn't was the Chandler fight, where that could have been stopped like twice. So um, I think this is going to be a war. I think it's going to be a fun fight, fight of the night, fight of the year. But I think Fiziev eventually catches Gaethje, but Gaethje's a dog. You never want to count him out. It's just Gaethje's now 34 years old. He's taken a ton of damage. You can't fight like that forever, the way he fights. I mean, eating one to give one. He's actually eating like seven or eight to give seven or eight. I mean, you can't you can't continue to fight like that your entire career. Uh, the damage, I think, is adding up for Gaethje. I think Fiziev knocks him out here. Um, and I have 1.5 units on the fight to end by knockout on Bet River Sportsbook. Um, I think this fight does end inside the distance, specifically by knockout. Um, 
And I think that's a better way to get that that fight doesn't go price down a little bit because none of these guys are winning by submission. I'd be shocked if they did. Uh, Gaethje doesn't wrestle. Fiziev doesn't wrestle. Um, they both have submissions, but they were both a long time ago. So I like the fight to end by knockout. 1.5 units minus 150 there. And then finally, in the main event, um, Usman Edwards 3. And yeah, I have two bets here. So the first bet is that over 1.5 on Bet35 Sportsbook. They have it at minus 475 for that over 1.5, which... Every other book, it's like minus 650 to minus 800 on some. So if you have Bet365, I don't hate that over as a parlay piece. And I did parlay that. Minus 500, though. Um, it actually got worse after I bet it. Minus 500 for the over 1.5. And, and then I parlayed that with Jake Hadley. That came out to minus 184 for 2.5 units. That is my biggest bet of the card. Um, I think this goes over, obviously. I think this probably goes the distance. Um, I do have another bet, though. I have the, the half a unit shot on Edwards. Finish only, scorecards no action, because Edwards has never been finished. Kamaru Usman's been finished in both of his losses. I do have some question marks about you know the age of Usman now, um, the fact that he just got knocked out. How's he going to bounce back? I think if there's a finish in this matchup, it comes from the Leon Edwards side. But yeah, I think the most likely scenario is that you know Kamaru Usman by decision route. But I don't know. I have a weird feeling about this fight. I've said it all week. Um, don't feel great about it. But you know, after watching the second fight, I, I have to pick Kamaru Usman and pick him by decision. But um, I'm just rooting for a good fight. I'm rooting for the over in this fight. Um, I hate overs. You guys know that. But I do have two overs in this matchup. So hopefully both those hit. But I'm going to take Usman by decision. I don't hate anybody taking the poke on Edwards, to be honest. Um, just with all the, the narrative things surrounding Kamar Usman this week. All right. So that is about it. I'm um, going to go over my bets real quick. I have one unit on the fight. Doesn't go to decision. Uh, Veronica Hardy, Juliana Miller, plus 100. One unit, Lerone Murphy, Gabriel Santos. Fight doesn't go to decision. Um, plus 105. I have a quarter unit on Murphy by knockout, plus 400. I have 1.25 units on Jack Shore, Maquan, and Marikani, over one and a half rounds, minus 125. I have a quarter unit sprinkle on Jack Shore, round two, plus 460. And then another quarter unit sprinkle, Jack Shore, round three, plus 850. I have two and a half units on Kamara Usman, Leon Edwards, over one and a half rounds, parlayed with Jake Hadley, came out to minus 184. I have 1.5 units on Jake Hadley, winning inside the distance, minus 135 on DraftKings. I have the Leon Edwards scorecards equals no action, a.k.a. the finish only, um, half a unit, plus 140. One unit on the Patterson Ashmos under two and a half minus one thirty. One and a half units on the Gaethje Fizia fight ending by knockout minus one fifty. Half a unit Gunnar Nelson submission plus one fifteen. And then a one unit parlay um, Marvin Vittori parlayed with the Morales Duncan fight doesn't go to decision plus one hundred. Those are the thirteen bets. Couple sprinkles, couple big bets. My night pretty much comes down to that over in the main event. Jake Hadley getting the job done as well. So yeah, should be a good card. Thank you guys so much for watching. Leave a like, subscribe. I'll be going live at 12 o'clock p.m. Um, for the uh, best bet with me, Narco Cop, Billy Briz, and Gordo Gambles. That's going to be on my channel, channel DFS by the numbers. Should be a good panel there. Um, and yeah, other than that, you can follow me on Twitter, DFS underscore numbers, Instagram, DFS by the numbers. Best of luck for UFC 286. We'll talk to you guys very soon. And yeah, hopefully we can keep the train kind of rolling here. It's been a nice couple, uh, last couple weeks, couple months. And hopefully it's another good one here with this car. So best of luck, guys. Enjoy the fights, and we'll talk to you soon. See you.